Benjamin Gerber. Marian is interested in open source and data and is motivated and engaged as a GIS developer and data integrator for camp to camp since 2016. Benjamin has been engaged and motivated by geospatial and open source data and technology since 2014. He has moved from Switzerland to work for camp to camp and is speaker for the first time at Force 4G. I'd like to welcome you to our presentation about geographic mapping of business data. In this presentation, we will present to you a live application that we built from bottom up based on a requirement that we got from a client. Presenting to you will be Benjamin and myself, Marion. We are developers for the company camp to camp this company is, um, has three departments, the geospatial, the business and infrastructure department, and we are based in Switzerland, France and Germany. We are doing innovative open source solutions since 2001. In this presentation, Benjamin will first uh, show you a, a demonstration of the application so you have a better idea of what we're actually looking at. Then we'll talk about the challenges and the architecture of the application. In the end, we'll show some results, the outlook of what's next and what we've learned during the development of the application. The aim of the application is to present business data in a geographic context so that the customer can draw a conclusion of how well his company is doing in what area of the world. This doesn't only give information of how the company is doing, but it will also give information of where the, there's a lack of information or where there's more need to invest. So this is the main application and now Benjamin will give you a short demonstration of the details of this application. So that's the application. On this application we have several reports. Each report shows another perspective of our business data. We start with the main report, the dashboard. On this report you can see um, several widgets. For instance, we have the sales, we have a chart with the sales over the time. We have another uh, about the top customers, another for the top regions and the sales and discounting re regions. We have a pie chart for the revenue by product category. And we have a map with a curve plate style over the sales. To play with our data, here mainly the sales, we can use the left panel with some filter. These filters are specific to this report. Here we have the category, um, the unit, the sales tip, and uh, the time slot and the period. In addition of that, you can use the map to filter the data. Currently, we have the data for the world world, or at least for the country uh, where we have data, but I can go inside a country to have the data only for this country. We can see this principle on another report, like the historical sales comparison. On this report, we have a bigger map and a, gri a grid. In this grid, we compare the delta of sales between two periods uh, for each country. And again, we can go in a country to see the same data, but for the region. I can also go in a region and go inside to the final level to have directly the sales for each POI or for each uh, point of sales. That allows us to analyze our data finely. We have other reports with other geographical um, tools. We have also other reports without geographical information, 
like this one, only with a line chart to see the top customer over the time. We have also two different, uh, two specific reports, more for administrator. We have this one, the point exception, because um, if your shop uh, have a wrong geographical information, like uh, no, no geographical information or a point in the ocean, or if you have a wrong address, or a mismatch between the address and the geographical information, we can uh, display this point in this report and then correct it. And we have the, this report, the system user index, also for more for an administrator to see which report is used by which user and that allow us to focus on the more used report and more used functionality so to focus our development and that's it for the demo so now what was the challenges so we have a, some point for from the business concept and some about the technical aspect but the main point is the flexibility because we had some ideas we try some existing product. We also have done our own uh, proof of concept. But at the end, each ID gives new ideas and we need a strong code and a flexible enough code to support all our new ideas. Sadly, the existing tools was not um, good enough for us, they never covered the full requirements. So we have developed our own product um, based on open source product to have the most flexibility. Thanks to the open source product, we were able to develop this product in a relative short time. For the architecture, we have an API using Python 3. Um, the backend framework is Pyramid. We have GeoAlchemy 2 to manage the geographical information. We have Postgres with PostGIS to manage the, the data. And we use uh, another tool, open source tool, C2C Whiskey Utils to have a Whiskey application with the Pyramid framework. For the front end, we use uh, UI, uh, from, we use TypeScript with Angular. We have open layers to manage the map and we have D3 to manage the charts. For the chart, we um, have developed our own small tool, D3, D3 helper, to ease the drawing of chart with D3. Sadly, this project is not open source. That's a private, a private pro product. But uh, as D3 Helper uh, is open source, you still can benefit of our work. Now, I would like to speak to you a little bit about how the data is integrated. The data is one of the main um, elements of this application. So we have two data sources. One is the data that we get from the customer, which is the raw business data. And the other data source is open source data that we extract to get information about the um, regions that we want to locate the business data into. To be able to simplify one to n joins, we do the normalization tables. In these tables, we join different attributes to be able to do more easily the queries that we need to get the data into the front end. In order to have the data always up to date in these the normalized tables, we do we have Postgres function that we can always run whenever we need to. A second big part of 
data integration that we do is mapping the poise into geographic regions. The raw data that we get from the customer is always linked to poise. So meaning they have a longitude and a longitude. Mainly these are stores. And now we want to take those stores and map them into three different administrative regions. Countries, regions and sub-regions. For this we need the OpenStreetMap data. So what we do is we link the data and for every POI we give a different region code, a sub-region code and a country code, whatever is available for that country that the POI is in. And now with this information we can filter on different administrative regions and create statistics based on country, region and sub-regions. So now we have this application and we, I would like to present you with some results that come out of it. We have an application that is highly flexible and it's mainly based on open source. This is because we want to keep it easily maintainable, customizable and extendable, which we can achieve with open source data. The front end is agnostic to the back end and with parameterizable components we can reuse them as much as possible. Some extras that come out of the application is a small custom library, the 3D helper library that is, was presented before by Benjamin and it's available as open source on GitHub. We used to have a custom a very flexible and custom SQL parser for the first version. Sadly, we had to abandon this because we had to face new uh, security requirements and we could not uh, complete them with what we had. What's next? Maintenance work is always something that we, we keep doing. Then we improve the existing features and new reports. Also, we improve the old reports depending on the requirements that we get. One bigger project within this application is also to extract the POI location system to make it available as open source. And also we are planning to use multiple databases so that we can externalize our log system where we log into different database than where we keep the data. During the development of this application, we learned many things. Mainly, share pieces of code is possible even if the project is a private project. Then we create standalone components that are configurable with options to reuse them. This was always a good point that helped us to develop and keep the application flexible. A more and independent flexibility can be achieved with a library independent strategy. Depending on libraries is not always um, the easiest thing because libraries change and needs change and they have to be met together. In the end, we have a centralized configuration which helped us a lot to be able to reuse, uh, reuse parts of the code and also the configuration wherever we need them. In conclusion, we have a highly flexible custom-built application which sets business data into a geographic context. We make use and share open source for flexibility and reusability. At this point, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you. You can follow this link to know more of, on our work. And we are awaiting your questions.
So the questions, have other businesses started using our methods? Um, as far as I know, no. Um, they haven't been around so long and the, the main project, it's actually a private repository. It's just the, the single parts that are available, but I have not heard yet of um, other businesses that have used them. We try to reuse them like the, the, these open source parts also internally in other projects, but uh, it's really new, so it hasn't really been done yet. Um, the question is, what changes would you make to your project in hindsight? Um, I think what we would do um, different is we we started up with a lot having a lot of the configuration in the front end, and then later on we had to move a lot into the back end, but we still have quite. Um, a bit in the front end. So starting from scratch, I would actually um, start off with with more parts in the back end than what we have currently, or like um, not put them initially in the in the front end. And um, yeah, I think that's the main change that I would do the rest. Um, I currently don't see what I would really change a lot. Well, uh, Chem to Chem do a lot of different projects in different uh, uh, section. We are working for, for the geospatial division. So we, we have a lot of uh, geoportal and geo solution for uh, countries uh, or big cities or even uh, private uh, big companies uh, but we have also another department uh, infra infrastructure solution uh, to manage uh, server deployment uh, uh, mainly on the uh, um, a Debian system or Red Hat system, but also some things on the, on Windows or on the, uh, cloud system. Um, and we have a business solution uh, that do a lot of projects, but mainly uh, work on Odoo things. So the, the big uh, ERP system. Uh, so the future of the project, um, we have planned to to have data uh, or uh, report to analyze uh, uh, the to, to do analyze more focused on the user uh, uh, with data that always come from Odoo. Uh, we have also some report to new report to add to to have more uh, scene analysis analysis on the on every data we have and we still have to uh, to to add some functionality to a new uh, to 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 the existing uh, reports so that's always an ongoing project and um, yeah, we, we we have a lot of ID and uh, the final customer have a lot of IDs, but uh, it's now a question of time and prioritizations. Thank you, Marianne and Benjamin for your presentation. I don't think there are any more questions, so I'm going to let you go. Thank you. Thank you as well. Bye. Bye. Bye.